Yeah, so. All right, everyone, simmer down. Okay. Hey, can everyone hear me? Can you hear me, Peter? You can. All right. Uh, hi, my name is Chris McGuire. I'm a software engineer at Vistar Media. Uh, as you may have heard me stumble through earlier uh, here in Philly, and today I'm going to be talking to you about DeckGL. Uh, so DeckGL is a, a data visualization library uh, for JavaScript. And uh, first, before I get started, have any of you heard of or used DeckGL before? A couple of you? All right. Um, so DeckGL is designed for working with um, large geospatial data sets, mainly to render them in, in 3D on a map. Um, oh, yeah. Is that better? OK. Um, so before I get started, I'd kind of like to talk about my background with it. So at Vistar Media, about six months ago, we had an event where we took a few days, had some impromptu teams, and just kind of worked on whatever we want. And we had a salesperson come up to us, and, was like, and she had an image that was kind of like this. And she was like, we want, like, if we had something like this, we could, like, go into sales meetings, and there's, like, three dimensions and graphs and stuff. Like, this would be awesome. And uh, we're kind of like, I have, we have no idea how to do this. Uh, we, we had like looked into it and like figured it would be maybe like a stretch goal. And it turns out with DeckGL, this was actually like it took maybe half a day. It was, it was uh, surprisingly easy to do. Uh, so let's get into it. So DeckGL, the, there are a few things I like about DeckGL. One, it's React compatible. Uh, it's exposed as, or it can be used as a uh, React component. So fitting it into your applications is, is pretty trivial. Um, it's also super configurable. I'm going to be walking through a few of its uh, its visualizations in a little bit, and there are so many knobs and dials you can turn to really make it look however you want. And um, the nice thing though is if you don't want to delve into that that level of configuration, it's very approachable, especially if you've used anything like Leaflet. Um, but even if you haven't, if you just have a data set, you can just give it to these features and and have them show up in three dimensions. And also, like I don't know, it personally it just like looks nice to me. Um, to be able to like interact with a 3D map. So DeckGL itself, as I mentioned before, it's a, a JavaScript script library. It's maintained by Uber, uh, and it's built on top of WebGL, which is also what's used by like 3JS and BabylonJS. And it's just uh, a, an API that lets you render 3D objects in a browser. Uh, and these are some of the, uh, the benchmarks from, from uh, DeckGL. But it, it works on large data sets. I haven't worked with anything nearly at a million data points, but it it doesn't really make your, your computer chug. It works on mobile up to a certain, like I'm sure at like 10 million data points, it probably wouldn't work on your phone. But um, with most data sets that I've worked with, spe uh, specifically in with Philly data sets, uh, it works very reasonably. So one of the interesting things about DeckGL is it doesn't actually provide a map for you. It really it lives as like an overlay on top of a map. So as you can see here, um, if you have like some visualization layers um, and then a map, DeckGL kind of like superimposes those visualizations on top of your map. Uh, and then when you interact with you like move your map, those visualizations will move with it. Um, the nice thing about this is that technically it's not it's it's map ag library ag agnostic, so it could could work with any map you want. The reality is it's pretty coupled to Mapbox. Um, all of its exam or almost all of its examples are use Mapbox. Uh, a lot of its helper libraries use Mapbox. And that's noteworthy because Mapbox, uh, Mapbox has a pricing structure. Their free tier, I, th I think, works at about like 50,000 uh, app loads per month. But after that, they want, there's like some charge or there's some fee that they want to charge you. So it's definitely something to take into account. Uh, so let's let's get into it. The main thing you're kind of you're going to be interacting with uh, in DeckGL are layers. Layers are just the visualization part of of DeckGL. So, uh, for example, you might have a line layer where you give it a series of start and end points, and it will render those on a map. Um, another interesting one is it has a hexagon layer, uh, which, given and uh, points kind of spread across a map, will bin them into these hexagon shapes, and then the height can be based off of the density of, of those points. Another one I'm going to be using is a, in, in the demo in a little bit is a, a GeoJSON layer. So GeoJSON is a really common format for um, just for geospatial data that you get from like Open Data Philly. So it's nice to be able to just take 
geospatial data from some uh, export that you can get and just give it to a deck geo layer and have it render based off of uh, render as like a variety of shapes based off the feature type and there are really there are like tons of of different layers uh, in deck gl their their docs are really good they have examples for a lot of these so i, I definitely recommend if you're interested uh, check them out and kind of click through some of these so I think, so what I want to do is I just kind of want to walk through building one of these, like a, an application uh, using DeckGL. And kind of what I want to visualize here is for Philly, how, how many street trees are there uh, by zip code in Philly? So I'm using two data sets from Open Data Philly here. I'm using the zip code shapes and uh, Philadelphia street tree inventory. These are just GeoJSON, um, uh, uh, there's GeoJSON I got from, from Open Data Philly. I'm also kind of cutting out a step here. Um, technically, I'm combining these in a Python script, um, which if you're curious, is at github.com slash chrismcguire slash deckgl demo. Uh, and really all that's doing is it's kind of combining those street tree points into each uh, zip code shape. So this is, sorry, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, in the GeoJSON, feature i'm just uh count like i for each zip i have a count of how many trees are in in that shape and what the tree per area of that shape is uh, so as i mentioned this is as a javascript library so you can just install it with npm i'm also installing react uh, react map gl uh, just as a helper for mapbox so to use this um, I'm importing React because I'm going to be uh, using this as a React application. I'm importing DeckGL from the React module of uh, DeckGL just because I'm going to be interacting with that as a uh, component. And I'm also importing a GeoJSON layer from DeckGL to uh, kind of use to render that data. And then I'm defining a view state, which is just the lat long where the camera is going to start in, that, uh, in the map. Here, I'm inlining the GeoJSON. Uh, this is sort of a shortcut. In reality, I'm making a request out to the internet to pull this in. But uh, for the sake of example, it's just uh, inline. And then here, um, you can see I'm just defining an array of layers with a single GeoJSON layer. I'm giving it that GeoJSON uh, above. And then I'm returning a DeckGL component with that view state the uh, layers that I defined, and this controller prop, which just lets you interact with that map. So if we render this, what you can see is we just get a shape that is Philly, of, uh, but without any like anything useful. There's no map here. But to add a map, all we need to do is use that React map GL library I imported um, and import static map. We're going to define our map box token. And we can just embed that, that static map in our DeckGL component uh, and give it our access token. And if we do that, we'll get a map here. And as you can see, it's going to sync that, that object with the map. So as we move around the map, the, the uh, visualization moves as well. But so what I want to do, just for, for an example sake, is have the height of each zip code be based off of the number of trees that are in that zip code. Uh, so what you can do is you can uh, create a function that uh, is going to take as an as an argument each of the uh, features for each uh, zip code, and that's just going to return that count of trees uh, that was in the property value of that feature. Uh, then in our in our GeoJSON layer, we're setting an extruded uh, prop to true, and we're passing for this get elevation prop. We're passing in that get height function we defined. And I'm also setting just like a few colors, so this is a little bit easier to see. But again, now you see we have shapes that are rendered in 3D, where the height of each of these is based off of uh, the trees in each zip code. Uh, but one other thing I want to do is I'd like to I don't know there, I'd like to add some color color to this. So uh, in that shape, we also had the trees per area. So I'm going to kind of hand wave this a little bit, but uh, what we can do is we can divide, uh, define a set of colors as RGB values uh, and kind of like scale these so that lower, lower numbers will get these lower, uh, lower or like lighter colors and higher, higher values will get these higher colors. 
Um, and we're going to do the same thing we did for the height, where we're defining a get color function that's going to just take in as a parameter that feature, pull off the tree per area, and return a color. Uh, this, this function could return whatever logic you want to define the color of that, uh, that feature. And then again, we're just going to pass this in as an argument uh, as a get fill color. So if we render this now, you can see we have color um, where the height is based off the number of trees and then and the color is based off of the density of the trees within that area. Uh, and finally, I'm, I'm not, I'm just gonna kind of, this is a bit more verbose, so I'm not gonna walk through it in code, but you can also, there's like a bunch of controls you can add here. So here we can also add like a ho on hover event um, so that as you move the mouse around, you can see what zip code is, uh, or corresponds with each area. Uh, so that's that's kind of all it need, all you need to do to to render this. Um, real quick, if if none of this, if you don't want to like build an application, um, Uber also provides a, a, a site called Kepler.gl, which is really nice because you can just give it the actual data that you want. So here I'm going to take that same JSON value, uh, and it'll just load it into a DeckGL environment, so you can kind of do something very similar without having to, to uh, write all the code for it. If you just want to like look at the data itself. Um, and so you can see here, we can like set the height based off of the same parameters. Uh, it's very useful. Uh, so that's all I have. Um, I, again, I work for a company called Vistar Media. Um, this is where we're at. Um, thank you very much. Would you like to take any questions? Yeah, yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Question over here. Hold on, Derek. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, is that example on GitHub? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. It um, it's at. I can find that. It's at uh, GitHub.com/slash Chris McGuire slash whatever I named that repository. These slides don't like it when you go backwards either. Um, I can actually, I can leave a comment uh, or I'll, I'll link to it on the, the meetup uh, event. All right, cool. I'll start stalking your page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I guess I'm wondering if you could draw the map as a layer. Yeah, actually, I think that's how um, you can definitely do. Um, I know like Mapbox will let you do building layers. I think the layer or the map itself, I'm not sure if it's technically a layer or not. You can do, I know you. there's a layer for tiles um, where you can like build the actual uh, map tiles as a layer itself. If that's kind of what you're asking. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, the uh, the Philadelphia County is a recognizable map shape. So I'm like thinking you don't necessarily need the map. If you drew all the counties in Pennsylvania, you'd still have like a reference point. Oh yeah, yeah, you definitely don't need the map. Um, it's like, you can just render the shapes themselves if, if that's uh, all you really need to work. And then you're not tied to Mapbox at all. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Uh, question over here. Yeah. Uh, just qu real quick, uh, amazing presentation. Uh, what software are you using? Uh, for what? For your presentation. Oh, for the presentation. It's uh, Re Reveal.js. Awesome. It, uh, I don't know. I tried it out. I was like, I don't want to use slides, so I, I tried. It's, it lets you define it as um, like uh, HTML, but it was I don't know. It was it was kind of a pain to work with, to be honest. Any other questions? Question? I see a half a hand. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about your use case? I think you mentioned something about salespeople using this. Oh yeah. So um, we serve a bunch of. Um, we serve like digital advertising, so uh, media owners who have screens that are like on highways and stuff. And one of the the use cases is people like buyers, people who are want to put ads on screens, don't necessarily have a way to visualize where their ads are going because we're we just kind of we're an exchange, so they they buy ads and then they're served. But but it's harder to render them on a map. So one of the things was visualizing. Uh, the ad locations on, in this like bar chart thing. Thank you. Oh, any any last questions? 
All right, one more time for Chris. Thank you.